Hi, and welcome back. It's week five of the 52-week Healthy Living course, and I'm so glad you're back. I hope you've been enjoying the, each week's webinars as much as I have. Every week, they get better and better and better, and I can't wait for the next one to be released. But I wanted to come on and give you a few thoughts of my own before tonight's webinar launches. Today, or this week, we are gonna be talking about how to create the life that you want. What does that even mean? Can you even envision that? Do you even know what kind of life you are dreaming of? Four years ago when I started this process, I had no idea. I couldn't dream of a life ahead of a few days later. That wasn't where I was. And so if you're in a place where you can't dream big, don't worry, you're not alone. That's what we're gonna be working with you on over the course of the year to get you to a place to start to improve your life where you can start to dream and dream big. When I started this process four years ago, all I wanted to do was lose some weight. I needed to lose some weight. It was not, there was not a question. I needed, I needed to lose 75 pounds. My life literally depended on it. But I couldn't envision my life different. I didn't know what that looked like. I didn't know what that felt like. Yes, I had lost the weight before, but every time I had lost it in the past, I had put it back on. And so I couldn't imagine my life sitting in the future staying at a healthy weight. It just wasn't there. But the truth is, that's okay. We don't have to be able to envision that far out. We need to be able to just say, I'm going to go one more day, one more day, one more day. Take one more step towards a healthy life. And every time we do that, we continue to grow and grow and grow and better our lives. And then we turn around and we look back and wow, we've taken all these baby steps and then we've gone miles. And it's really crazy. It's really crazy. If you had told me four years ago when I started this journey, not only would I have lost the weight, not only would I have kept it off, not only would my children be emulating and copying the healthy habits that I've worked really hard to, to create for myself and this trickle down effect, but all the ways, all the things that my life has changed in these four years, I'm living a life that I couldn't have dreamed of before. And four years ago, I wouldn't have been able to dream there. I wouldn't have been able to go there. And it wasn't right for me to dream there. And the truth is, I don't know what's going to be for next year. I have some big dreams. I have learned to dream. I've learned to, to go for it. And that's the concept of lead from the future, act in the now. Start to envision your future. What do you want? And then take those action steps every single day now to get yourself there. But if you can't see it, if you can't feel it, that's okay. One small step every single day. I'm going to tell you guys something. I'm going to be really, really, really real, real here. Four years ago when I started my journey, I picked an arbitrary number. Well, it wasn't so arbitrary to me, but I picked a goal weight based on crazy thoughts in my head. I based my goal weight on some number that some woman had told me when I was 18, 17 or 18 years old. I was doing another program, she, and she told me that that was the number that I was, if I could even get there, that was as low as I was ever going to be able to maintain. It was the lowest I was ever going to be able to stay at. And you know what? When you tell somebody that, I don't care how old they are, whether they're a teenager, whether, whether they're an adult, it sticks in their head. And those are the crazy stories they begin to tell themselves. So four years ago, when I started this journey, I had that crazy number in my head and that crazy thing. So I set my goal at that number. And the truth is that number is at the very top of my healthy weight range. So am I in a healthy place? Yes, I am. But it's the very top of my healthy weight, weight range. But I shot for that number because that was all I believed that I could do. Because some... Some woman told me a long time ago that that was all I could do. And so I believed that. I had taken that on and taken that on as my, as my thing, that that was where I could get to. So I worked really, really, really hard. It took me seven months to lose those 75 pounds. But through that stage, I didn't believe in myself. I didn't know how to create the life that I really wanted because I really didn't know what life I wanted. I knew I wanted to feel better. I knew I wanted to be active with my kids. I knew that I wanted to teach my kids new healthy habits and so that they would never have to live what I'm living. And that was just enough of a dream. Those things were just enough of a vision. So even if you can't envision big things in your life, find your little visions, 
find your little pieces that you can that you can grab onto because all of those things in my life have now happened because I grabbed onto those but I went for it and I worked really hard and I got myself to that weight because I had been told that I could do it and truthfully I had gotten here before I had gotten to this weight before but I had never been able to keep it off. As, as I've told you guys before, I was a professional yo-yo dieter. So I'd hit that number and I'd go right back up. And I had done that not long before I started this journey. I hit this number and I had spiraled back up and, um, and had put on 75 pounds in, about the, in the course of about six months. Crazy, crazy. And I was miserable. And I, it wasn't what I wanted, but I didn't know how to dream bigger. I didn't know how to see all the things that could happen. So I took those little pieces, those little dreams, and started going for them one small piece at a time. The first thing was just get the weight off. I just had to. But while that was happening, something else happened. The pure changed. And I started to be able to dream bigger. I started to be able to envision the life that I wanted as I started to feel good, as the weight started to come off. As all those things started happening, as I started getting energy and started being able to do things with my kids and, and go all the places that I wanted to go and do it with a smile and feel good and see those pictures behind me, those pictures behind me are from not long before I started this journey. And you can see, I don't know how well you can see it, because, but I am hiding in every one of those pictures. I am in the back behind everybody and that was intentional because I didn't like to be on the camera. I didn't like to be seen. You were never going to get a full body shot of me. I was always hidden because I was embarrassed of who I was, but I didn't want to be embarrassed anymore. I was tired of living that life and I wanted to create my bigger, my better life, but I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know how to do that. But it happened one small piece at a time, one day at a time. So if you're sitting where I was, four years ago and going, oh my gosh, I can't even envision myself at a healthy weight. I have no idea what that means. You're not alone. But here I'll tell you, I got to that healthy weight. I got to that goal and I've held it off. I've held that weight for th over three and a half years now. Over three and a half years, I'm coming up on my four year anniversary of getting started. For three and a half years, I've kept this weight off. And the truth is, I really needed to lose another 20 pounds. I needed to to get to really where I want to be, to be, you know, close to the, close to the bottom side of the middle of my healthy weight range. It's really another 20 pounds is where I should be. And for the last three and a half years, I've sort of, not three and a half years, probably the last two years, I've sort of dilly dallied around with it. Because when I hit my goal, I wanted to prove to myself that I was actually going to be able to keep this weight off before trying to lose anymore. And I've struggled. I've really, really, really struggled with getting that weight off. Not because my program works any different. I will tell you when I stick to the program, the program works the same way it did when I lost my first 75 pounds. It's not about the program. It's about me. It's about up here. It's about creating the life that I want, and, but being able to envision that life of what I really want. Because the problem is, I knew what this weight felt like, sort of. I didn't really, because the last time I had been here, I had not gotten here in a healthy way, so I didn't feel nearly as good as I feel now. And I actually didn't look as good. I, the clothes still fit me. I lost the weight this time in a healthy, healthy way and didn't lose the muscle and lost all the fat. And so, it, so my whole body structure changed from previous times when I had been at this same weight. But I can't, couldn't envision it. I can't envision it. I have no idea what that's going to look like. I cannot picture what I would look like 20 pounds less. I can picture what I think I would look like, but I don't know because I'll tell you, when I still look in the mirror, I don't always see myself at this current place. I still sometimes see myself like up there in that picture and hiding behind my family. But I made a decision and I've struggled with this for a long time, but I made a decision at the beginning of, of the year that it was time, that it's time to do this, that it's time to go back to that old thought process of leave from the future and act in the now. It's not an old thought process. It's, how I, it's really how I live my life and everything that I do. But to change this concept up here and to really say, I can do this. I don't need to be scared of it. I don't need to be scared of what is it going to be and can I do it? I know I can do it. And so I'm taking it one day at a time and getting there and I will get there. Just like whatever goals you've set for yourself, you'll get there. I promise you, you'll get there. But what was really interesting was I was having a conversation with somebody last week. And we were talking about 
is this healthier? Is that healthier? Which, which form of something is healthier? And I looked at her and I said, does it really matter? I said, look at how far you've come. You we were actually talking about fish, whether it was better to eat wild fish, wild caught fish or farm raised fish. And I said, does it really matter? Because look at how far you've come. You're now choosing fish over the unhealthy foods that you used to eat. So maybe one is healthier, a little bit healthier than the other, but it's not, let's, let's see where this, look how far you've gone back. And she, she stopped and she said, you're right. And that's what we have to look at. We have to celebrate our wins. We don't have to beat ourselves up with, could I be doing this better? But it's really about how far we've come. This is a journey. Every piece of this is a journey. When I started this piece four years ago, you wouldn't have found a vegetable on my plate. It just didn't, I just didn't do it. I fed it to my kids because I knew that they were important, but I didn't make it. I didn't eat them, which that was a big thing for me. I wanted this trickle down effect, but and my kids were still little at the time, so they didn't see me eating dinner. But as we got old, as they got older, if I wasn't going to put vegetables on my plate, how could I tell them to do so? But when I started this journey, I made a decision that I was going to, to expand my vegetable horizon. I was a picky, picky, picky eater. I'm still a fairly picky eater. I was a really picky eater and I wouldn't touch vegetables. Now, four years later, some foods that I would not have ever dreamed of putting on my plate are some of my favorites. And I actually have a problem the other way that I eat too many of them and I can't stop picking at them off the tray. And that's a whole nother situation. But it's crazy to think that those foods that I wouldn't even touch over a small period of time, and it didn't happen overnight. It wasn't cauliflower, for instance, one of the things that I would not have touched with a 10-foot pole four years ago. No way, no how. And all of a sudden, one day, I decided, you know what? There are all these good cauliflower recipes. I see all these good cauliflower recipes out there, and I was really a pizza. I was really wanted pizza. And regular pizza, obviously, was not on my plan, but cauliflower pizza was. There was a recipe for cauliflower pizza that I could have. And so I was like, said, you know what? I'm going to try it. And I made it and it was really good. And I had masked the flavor of the cauliflower with the cheese and the sauce and all the other stuff. But it slowly became, that was how I first ate cauliflower. And then I tasted it another way. And then I tasted it another way. And now I love cauliflower just, just roasted. But that happened, small baby steps. That's how we create our new life. One small baby step at a time. It's really, really, really. That's, that's the way we do it. There's no other way to do it, but one small habit at a time. And the thing is, what we wanna do to create that is we wanna create ourselves some structural tension. I don't know if you know what structural tension is. If you followed me on Facebook ever, you've probably heard me talk about it, but structural tension is where you've got in your structure something at the top pulling from something at the bottom and there's, there's tension in between. And usually I do this with a rubber band and I don't have a rubber band with me. But, and it, you pull and it pulls tight. And that pulling the tight, at the bottom is where you are right now, and at the top is where you wanna go, and that pulling that tight, it naturally pulls up. You can picture this with a rubber band. And naturally pulls up. But you have to keep pulling up. You have to keep continue to raise, raise that tension up so that you're reaching higher and higher and higher. My goals from four years ago when I started, that first goal was 75 pounds, that was up here. But I'm there. I got there. There's no tension there now. I've lost that weight and I kept it off. So I had to stretch my goals. Now what are my goals? Well, my goals are now that extra 20 pounds. But what else are my goals? My goals are to be able to travel with my kids. I'm doing that. But even more, my goals are to be able to help a lot more people get healthy. I'm doing that. But I got to keep stretching those goals. I got to keep building this life bigger and bigger and bigger. My goals include having my husband doing this full time with me. We're working on that. All these things, but we've got to create our goals. We've got to create our structural tension and build that into our lives. And the only way we can build that is to learn to lead from the future and act in the now. Learn to dream, even if it's small dreams in the beginning. Like I said, for me, not that losing 75 pounds was a small dream, but it was something that I could picture. Start with those. Don't worry about what it's going to look like when you hit your goal. Don't worry about what it's going to be at the end. Just Pick, start with a goal and one small step at a time. And recognize there are going to be setbacks along the way. It's going to be hard. It's going to be challenging. But you know what? It's going to feel so good every step that you take. And when you have a setback and you stop and look at your wins, 
you're going to see you're so much further along than you were when you started. One of my favorite analogies, it's not even an analogy, it's a truth. One of my favorite things to talk about is that when a plane is flying from the East Coast to the West Coast, 90% of the time it is flying in the wrong direction. It's got to go north, it's got to go south, it's got to go around to get around the storms and the turbulence and whatever else it's flying around. I don't know, I'm not a pilot. But a big percentage of the time it's going the wrong direction. But you know what? It ends up on the other coast when it's supposed to. If you're driving through the mountains of Colorado, if you want to get from one side to the other to go through the mountains of Colorado, you're not a straight shot. You have to go north to go south. You have to go all, you can't just drive straight. You have to wind around them. That's what this journey is. That's what this is all about. And when we remember that, and when we stop beating ourselves up over it, and we take it one small step at a time, we get there. It doesn't, it's not a race. There are gonna be pit stops. There are gonna be backslides. But every time you backslide, I can tell you, you're further along than you were before. And that's what I want you to stop and remember. So leave from the future, act in the now and set yourself up for awesome ways to cre have, create what you want. So tonight's webinar is, get, or this week's webinar is gonna talk about that, how to create the life that you want. It's gonna be amazing. If you can be on it live, fantastic. If you can't, they're always recorded. And if you're catching this long after this was, the original recording was done, don't worry. They are all available on, um, backlogged for you and, and you can, we can get that video for you. So if this is your first time coming on, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you're here with us. And if you would like the recordings from the first four weeks of our webinar, please reach out and let me know or reach out to the person who sent this to you and let them know and we will get you connected We can and we can get you in and started and rocking and rolling for every week from here on out. Hope you have a great day. Enjoy the webinar and I will see you next week.